going to talk about the experiments that they have designed to actually work with the base system. So I'll turn it over. Thank you, Dr. Berger. Um, first off, thank you all for being here and uh, sticking around after all these other great presentations. It was good to learn about those. Uh, I'm Devin Nakahara. I am the project manager, and I also work on the enclosure here. Uh, over here, we have Alex Sinan, who worked on software and then also was an overview for uh, hardware and helped Ting Fu out a lot, quite a bit. Uh, Ting Fu here got in the nitty gritty details on the hardware, uh, picked all the components, built the circuits, and you know, obviously asked for a lot of help. Um, <laughs> and then we have Alexander McKelligan over here who put another daughter board. Um, he will be presenting with our partnering team when they go over all the daughter boards. Uh, a little bit of overview is, like I already said, we're two teams. We worked on the main base box, uh, the enclosure and stuff, and they built like, additional daughter boards to uh, show more functionality and uh, for the experiment. Um, like Dr. Sinise, Dr. Berger is our industry advisor, as well as Dr. Randy Kong is our faculty advisor. So, a little bit of background on this project. We are not the first team to do this. Uh, we are picking this up, for, uh, we are the third team to work on this, or I should say teams. Um, the previous teams were successfully able to get a functioning prototype or concept working. Uh, this picture shows what they did. They did a great job. Uh, they had a couple of daughter boards to go with it and show what, what, how it worked. Uh, our teams were set to obviously create additional daughter boards, more experiments to work with this, this uh, system. And then we were here to improve the motherboard and uh, just make it better. Um, so, the remote lab system, what, what is it? It's a system essentially that will allow electrical engineering students to complete uh, laboratory experiments remotely. So, anywhere they have internet access, they can remote in and do it. Uh, this system will allow students to have more time to do lab experiments. They will be able to, uh, they won't have to worry about their uh, lab, the lab hours. So, I mean, if you wanted to log in at 2 in the morning to do your lab experiment, you'd be able to do that as long as you get a lab tech there to change up experiments. Um, you'll also be able to have all of your, all of the devices that you need to have right there in the box. So how does it work? The lab experiment essentially is just a box that we have connected to a computer here at the UW Bothell. This, uh, which then a student will be able to remote desktop into this lab experiment and work with the user interface to run their experiments. So a little bit of overview on the hardware that we have. Uh, we have some pre-existing hardware from previous teams. Um, we have a Bellman oscilloscope and function generator. Uh, logic port, logic analyzer for digital experiments, uh, power supply for the to power the box, uh, and then the Mega or Arduino Mega uh, to help control everything. Some new devices that we decided to add in are the micro SD card reader as well as an analog and digital converter. Both of those are from Adafruit. Uh, we'll be going over a little more, a little more detail on why we decided to keep some of these uh, devices and also why we decided to add some. Of I'll hand it over to Tinko and Alex who will go over more detail. Uh, just a brief start, uh, introduction about the device we're using in the box. Uh, Bellman Function Generator OC is a computer based device. You'll be able to use, it to use a computer to read and output a signal from the device. You have two channels of the scope probe and one channel of the signal output. We use this one because we have a pre existing software already like, have in our the software project, and so we decided to use it.
This is the Arduino Omega. Uh, it's used to run all the software of the system and control um, the interfacing between all of the existing hardware that we just went over to the daughter board experiments. It was chosen, or we chose to keep it because it has a large internal memory and a large number of pins that can be used for input and outputs to the daughter board experiments. This is the micro SD card reader. It's used to store external memory and external data that you may not want taking up space on the Arduino. We chose this because it has a small size and there's a pre-existing open source Arduino library already created for it that you can import to any Arduino code and have all of its functions ready to go. This is the analog to digital converter. It's used to read in analog signals from the data board and send them to the Arduino to be analyzed. It will be used as a voltmeter for the experiments because there's no other voltmeter implemented in the system. So when you came out with the newer version of the motherboard, the motherboard is a device that acts as a bridge, like communicate between the, the instrument inside the box and the dog board. So we implement uh, some new feature here to talk about. So this is the image, a photo of the newer version of the motherboard. We uh, decrease the size of the motherboard and implement new and this model can have the circuit of a variable DC voltage circuit, a DC biasing circuit, circuit and information network, and make viable hardware. Implement a new new components uh, on the variable DC power voltage regulator. We should be picking up the voltage regulator from the Indian Technology Company. Uh, or if you control the voltage for positive and negative. Uh, the fit uh, device is LT1963 uh, and 3015. Uh, we keep that because it, uh, its performance is much better than the, the older one. It has a lower noise on output, so we have a more stable voltage. And also we have a lower power dropout, so it doesn't consume as much power as the older one we have. We also have additional percussion feature uh, shutdown. We can shut down, we can easily control the device active or deactive from the Arduino. So we can protect the circuit when we are not using it. This implies circuit is a similar circuit as uh, the variable DC supply. Uh, the purpose of the, the biasing circuit is to provide a biasing voltage uh, to a dollar board using the uh, the condition there of uh, biasing voltage exists in the circuit. And also you can, as a secondary uh, power of DC source to supply the dog board. And so since the, the main well power supply output positive 5 volts, positive 15 volts, and negative 15 volts of the voltage, so I decided to implement the negative 5 volt voltage to pair with the positive fiber in here to have a and the motion gets to step down from maybe 15 volt to maybe 5 volt pulses. This is the scope probe attenuation network. It's used to switch between one times and ten times attenuation for the development function generator. When you're measuring low frequency signals, it's okay to just use a regular scope probe. But if you measure high frequency signals, the low impedance of the scope probes could cause some reflection back and distort the signal that you're measuring. So it's important to use the 10 times attenuation. A mechanical relay is used to, to switch between the regular uh, Bellman scope and this high impedance, both, uh, high impedance piece that creates a voltage divider between these elements and the scope probe to allow you to measure uh, higher frequencies more accurately, but this does cause the amplitude of the measured signal to go down by a factor of 10. Software overview. So the software that we added into the system was controlling the variable DC and biasing circuits and controlling the attenuation network. The variable DC and biasing is controlled by a function that's written in the Arduino. It will be called whenever a new voltage value is needed or a new dot board 
is plugged into the system. It, uh, it sends a 10-bit binary number to the digital potentiometer, and that number gives it a resistor value to set in the circuit to change the output voltage. And there also the shutdown pin that Tinku was talking about is controlled by the Arduino to shut it off when no voltage is needed by the power ports. The attenuation network control is each relay is connected to a separate pin on the Arduino, and it simply sends a signal or doesn't send a signal depending on what attenuation you want. So, for the enclosure, uh, I work for the program called Fusion 360. This is the program uh, here, or I should say advertised by the school here. Um, and working with the UWB Makerspace, which is actually right over there in the classroom. Um, this is the layout of the box that I have created. Um, and I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it uh, completed, made of acrylic due to technical difficulties with the, the laser cutter that they have there. Um, but I have a mock up made. Um, I guess we'll focus on that. So we checked all the trace connections on the PCB once we got it to make sure everything is shorted that needs to be shorted and everything's open that needs to be open. There's no like ground connecting to power. And we also successfully have the Arduino communicate with some of the circuits implemented with simple test software that we ran. All right, so looking back at this project, just as a project manager, some reflections that I would have are uh, allowing time for you and your team to learn tools required to, to do your project. So I mean, we had to learn some new tools like iCAD we used to create our PCB. It took us a few weeks to actually learn that, and I mean, thanks to LRE, she helped us out a lot with that. Um, so just learning, I mean, putting that in your, your timetable will, will help make a, a better, more clear timetable as well uh, for timeline for your project. Um, as a project manager, task tracking is crucial uh, to keeping yourself, you and your team, on the critical path uh, and on schedule at that. And then working with multiple teams and I guess a larger cash fund group in general, uh, cloud sharing becomes crucial as, as you all have one file that you want to keep up to date and um, just it, it works better for team cohesion as everyone is on the same page when they log in on file and stuff like that. So cloud sharing becomes a big part of it. Go for it. I learned a lot from this project. That's a PhD. So first, I from designing a circuit. Uh, yeah, we made so many parts available in the market. I just, you have to search over the internet, make sure these components are compatible with the other components in, in your circuit. You have to you know, read a whole day actually, like they could back and forth to make sure they are can they can work properly inside the circuit. Area. Also, you have to check this the hardware device can compatible with our software. Uh, so I have to learn. Lot, like, to communicate with my teammate, like to bring the hardware, the X, the software, but to talk a lot between us and to make sure our, our circuit will probably work on the model board. Also, uh, we encountered a delay on our model board deliver because of the manufacturing problem. Actually, luckily we got our board to the last time. Going off of what Tinku said um, about the hardware, making sure that uh, you read all the data sheets as thoroughly as possible and understand everything in that data sheet and that you're, you feel comfortable able to implement it and implement software to control it if it requires any software. And also control it or making software compatible with the existing software since we're not the first team to do this, there's already the existing software that we have to work with. And since we were two groups, Communication between the two groups was one of the hardest things, but most important things to keep having all eight people on the same page on everything. And make sure if you change one little thing, everybody knows about it because it could have been drastically change someone else's design. So before we hand it over to the our experiment group, um, is there any questions that you guys have about what we presented? Go ahead. Um, I saw that you guys used a separate AC. What was the reason for that? Does the magnet not have built in the ABC? The purpose of our uh, ABC converter is used for, uh, for this is the idea from the other program because we want a full meter. And we got that 
ABC shield from the data group. Uh, it, has, it has a programmable GAN network, so we can just measuring the voltage from using the ABC device and different and use a programmable, programmable GAN to read different ranges of the voltage. And also, we used almost every analog pin on the Arduino, so we wanted to be able to convert it to a digital and use some of the open digital pins. I see. So you simply ran out space. Yeah. Okay. Also, the AP on the one that they added is 16-bit. The one that's built into the Arduino is 10-bit. Oh, okay. So higher resolution. So we wanted higher resolution. Nice. Plus, it's a programmable game, which was convenient to do. So if you're implementing a volt, you can actually auto switch between the game settings. I measure it from the point of the Gotcha. Any other questions? Yeah, so the daughter boards actually are changed out by LabTech? Correct. Okay, so, uh, so it's you'll... not completely remote. There's got to be someone there to actually change out the labs. Right. Okay. But you'll be remotely doing experiments that they plug in. Right, yeah. So one, one experiment could be plugged in, and maybe for that day, for six hours, anybody needs to do that lab, to complete that lab, okay. and then it would get switched out to an experiment. Okay. Um, I should say that the, the vision for this is that we have a sea of these motherboards. Oh. Multiple motherboards, multiple host PCs, and essentially multiple experiments. So you could have at any one time 10 or more experiments plugged in and then uh, this, this is some background. Uh, a similar system was implemented by the University of South Australia. And they reported that the systems were most heavily used between 2 and 4 in the morning. Another <laughs> <laughs> question? Uh, yes. Did you guys test the maximum capacity of the common user can use at the same time? So it's, it's going to be remoted in from a, a remote computer uh, to a host. It would be I think it, it depends on the, the room or the... I'm sorry. How many people at one time? Yeah. Yes. Right now only one. Mm -hmm. Until we change the software setup. Uh, because due to the equipment that we have in the past, it can only allow access, being able to access one at a time. And you could technically have one person controlling it while another person looks on. So, from that theory. There is software. Now, right now, if you just use the remote desktop capability that's built into Windows, mm -hmm. one person can control a remote machine. But there is software out there that will allow multiple people to log into the same one computer. So you could imagine two or more people watching the same screen simultaneously. And as long as they decide, okay, who gets to push the buttons, uh, you could have multiple people actually doing an experiment. So we're, we're right now, uh, the sim in the simple way, one person logs in, but in the future, multiple people could be on the same experiment. 